What's up? What's up? What's up? Let me move back a little bit. How's everybody doing? I'm super excited to get my friend Heather O'Reilly is going to be joining me in a couple of minutes. I just spoke to her a little bit before and uh, she's ready to go. I'm so excited. Um, those of you that don't know Heather O'Reilly, where have you been? Why don't you know? She's a good friend of mine. We play together at the Boston Breakers um, and she's a fantastic person. One of the best teammates I've ever had. Um, her work ethic, everything about her, that winning mentality. And we're going to talk a little bit about the mentality of the Americans because people often ask me, why are they the best and why do I love America so much? Um, we're going to talk a little bit about the college system. She went to one of the best colleges in America, probably the best, UNC. Debatable, a little bit like teams in England, who's the best soccer team, but UNC are historically, you know, one of the best colleges. And like I said, Heyo is one of the best players I've ever been with, played with. Um, unbelievable teammate, unbelievable person. And the fact that she's coming on here when she's eight months pregnant, correct me if I'm wrong, it just shows you the mindset that she has. And, you know, she's always willing to give back. And I'm really excited for this one. So, yeah, I'm happy to um, really share Heather O'Reilly with you guys. Let's get her in. She's just said hi on here. Let's see. We could have our first birth on Instagram. Let's have a look. Heyo, have you requested it? Uh, let's see. How's everybody doing? I know a lot of people are super excited for this one, as am I. Let's have a look. A lot of you have sent me your questions already on Twitter. I'm going to ask as many as I can, but I just want this to be like a natural, like we usually do. Let's see. Where is she? Yay! Hey! <laughs> there she is. I had to correct you because I just um, discovered that I'm actually just hit nine months pregnant. Oh, sorry. Wait. So this means that we could have our first Instagram birth. <laughs> yeah. Wait, what do you mean you just found out? Well, like, you you know, not that I just found out, but like you get like, um, uh, <laughs> like a email every morning that's like tra a tracker thing. And like, just to just, remind you that you're pregnant. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> to remind you of your weeks that you're pregnant, uh, that you, you have left and the weeks that you've gone through. So yeah, I, but you know what? They don't tell you this, dude. Pregnancy is 10 months long, in theory. It's very strange. What? They don't so, teach you that at school. I don't know. It's weird how they that's count why, it. That's why I don't plan on doing it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Five or six months would have been plenty. At that point, I was like, tick, I was like, TikTok, let's move this along. How are you feeling? I'm fine. Thanks for asking. You look um, great. You look great. Thank you. thank you. It just looks like I ate a bowling ball. That's about it. <laughs> I feel like I look and act pretty much the same, but just like I ate a bowling ball. Have you had any, like, cravings or anything like that? Um, not too bad. I mean, I've definitely eaten a lot of ice cream <laughs> and, like, some weird things like pineapple. And I'll go to the grocery store and I'll just, like, see something. I'm like, yes, I need that. Like, it's, like, more intense feeling when you, like, see food. I've heard that people start craving things that they never, ever, like, usually yeah. like. I've heard that some people that I know yeah. are, like, all of a sudden, they started to like olives, and they don't like olives. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't think there was any. Olives, olives actually have been good. Um, but no, I haven't, like, had to send Dave out to, like, go How get How is Dave? Him. I miss him. He's great. He's taking it. Uh, obviously, he's taking the daddy duties so seriously. Yesterday, he had on his to-do list to, um, to put together the strollers, so he was all over that. He's so cute. Yeah. And he's still got the golf cart. That I've not been on yet, but I know the golf cart was like a really big deal. Yeah, that he yeah, yeah, about yeah, like yeah, yeah, yeah. Seven years ago in Boston, but you have the golf cart, right? Yeah, we have the golf buggy. I'm surprised you call it a golf cart. You're so American now. Usually, it's called a buggy in England, isn't it? Yeah, it is actually. I know. Wait, I are you in LA I still? I was talking to some of the parents, and it's interesting because it's the same language, but it's different. You know, like when we yeah. say this, we say a jumper, and it's like, you know, people are like jumper. And then when I first moved to America, I told the girls, that for the, when I played for the Philadelphia Independence, I said, oh, they gave me like a hamper. Because we call a hamper like a basket, but you guys call a hamper like yeah. a dirty laundry basket. We would say, we would would say hamper too. Sorry, I think I left the gate open when the, um, the well, I have this puppy. I have this puppy now, and I think I left the gate open. So, oh, okay, she didn't run away. 
So this is my trial run to see if I'm ready for a baby. <laughs> and things happen like this all the time. <laughs> So, you know, fingers crossed, everybody, Wait, well, everybody that got... prays, maybe say a prayer, say a prayer for me that I <laughs> actually, it was always so funny because like people like years ago were like, oh, would you have a baby and come back and play more? And I'm like, I don't think so. Like, I really kind of want to close up this part of my life and like this part of my career and then move on to that. I was like, I don't really want me mixing the two things. I was like, I can not, I, I don't even remember my shin guard sometimes. And like, I can't bring another human being into this equation. <laughs> no, it's just going to be like too much. Because I guarantee you, right? No, but I guarantee you that after being pregnant, for now what you've told me 10 months will be, you are still probably going to, would absolutely crush a fitness test. Like, I still think you would come first <laughs> on the fitness test, even after being pregnant. Because that's one thing that I never, <laughs> like, that's, it's true though. I mean... How do you do it? Like, how are you so fit? <laughs> I know Americans are like way fit, but you're like on a completely different level of fitness. I think it's a couple of things. Um, one, I mean, I do, I do have to preface it and say that like my dad was a track runner. He ran at a good university in the US, not like a level, but like kind of right under that. He was like a really good collegiate, like university track, track and field runner. So, like, I do have an advantage in terms of, like, a genetic disposition, I think, for running. Um, so, I always tell people that, like, to be fair. Um, and then I think that, like, from an early age, it gave me a lot of confidence to, like, be the fastest or the fittest. Like, and I just, I liked that feeling. I think that it gave me an edge, like, in terms of... Um, my teammates admiring it or like coaches wanting it to be part of a team. Um, yeah. I mean, the thing it, is about like, you, right? it really does send a message. I think um, to like, know that you can rely on somebody to like bring that. And I think it shows like a physical readiness and it yes. shows like a mental readiness and a commitment but to I the think, team. I think as well, being your teammate when we're in Boston, like one thing I always admired about you is you're always professional, but not only that you are able to go, the same in like the 90th minute as you are in the fifth minute. <laughs> like in the sense that like, say like when me, you and Sid played together at Boston, if I sent a through ball through, you would be getting there like you were in the beginning of the game. And there was times <laughs> when I'd be thinking, oh, I, are we, I, I, have I ever hit the ball? Are we going to make it? And you would still have that same, you know, it's all very well being fit and being able to run. Because I've had teammates that can like do well on a fitness test. But you right. actually are able to transcend that into a game, which as I think is the most important, right? Because obviously yeah, you, can yeah, fit yeah. And you can do all these fitness tests, but at the same time, because I remember I saw something and I remember I texted you about it, that when you were towards the end of your career with the national team, didn't you come first in the fitness test? Like literally, yeah. like, yeah. and that's, you know, and that's literally towards the end of your national team career and you're still coming first. Like, yeah. come on. I think I still like, hold the record. I think <laughs> I still hold the record. <laughs> you're like this. I think I still hold yeah. I think I know I still hold the record. So what is um, the record? Are yeah. we talking yo-yo record or sprint Yeah, record? the yo-yo, but I don't think they do that as much anymore. But yeah, the yo-yo record. Wow. And I'll let, I'll let everybody else, I'll let the viewers in on a secret because we've been really on the DL about this. We've been really like classy and hush-hush about it. But clearly some things have happened at U.S. Soccer over the last couple of months with the equal pay um, lawsuit and things like that that, um, you know, I, I never really wanted to tell people this, but actually the men's team was at the facility at the same time because it was, I think, a January training camp window. Um, and they were at a field next to us and we were there a few days earlier. So we had our fitness test results. So while we were training for our practice, they were doing the beep test at the field next next to us. And so we knew, we knew like my score and Kelly's score. It was like anybody, this would mean nothing to people that don't know the yo-yo, but it, mm -hmm. I got like a 68. I scored a 68, which is like a super good score. Wow. Um, and yeah, I don't <laughs> know. I blacked out. I blacked out. I blacked out. I don't know. I don't know. I blacked out. But um, so while we were training, it was only like warm up. So we were like attempting to pay attention, but we were also kind of like keeping an ear out for, the men because we were noticing that they were all dropping out at like 50 something. So 
we uh, we were getting all like excited that like somebody on our team might beat like the men's team. Mm -hmm. And Michael Bradley um, was the last one, the last man standing on the men's um, beep test. And he like dropped out, I think like right around like 66 or something like that. And all my teammates like came and like, we all like did this like group hug and like, it was so obnoxious. I'm sure the men's team like heard us cheering and like, but yeah. Wait, so like, you uh, actually got the best score out of the men and the women's team. Yeah. Wow. That is an exclusive and that's unbelievable. That's an exclusive. Was that the um, highest result? I mean, who you knows know? if it like, you know, they might not have been fit, blah, blah, blah. No, 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 but no, 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 at Don't that training it. camp, we, I, beat their, I beat the men's team. Wow, that's amazing. But this is what I'm talking about, right? This mentality. That's what I'm talking about, right? That, and it leads me to, this is one of the things I wanted to talk to you about. And I know you know this. So like, Because I often get asked, right? In the Sky Sports interview I did yesterday, they're like, quick fire questions, USA or England? And I'm like, okay, I'm proud to be from England. I'm always proud to be British. But. USA for me. You know how I feel about America. Yeah. I, I yeah. wish I could wear your jersey right now because I have yeah. it, but it's in my suitcase in America. And I feel yeah, like we can York. relate now because of my time over there too, going right. over for a year and a half. Right. But for what I'm America. saying is that when I got drafted to America 10 years ago, I finally didn't feel like an alien. Like, it was like, oh my goodness, this is me. Does that make sense? Like, yeah. the mindset, the win at all costs. Because I always say in England, like, we love a loser. And that's not being disrespectful. It's like, we don't know what it takes to win. And I'm like, I get asked this question a lot. Like, what is the American mentality? What does it look like? And I'm like, yeah. it's hard to explain it. Because you guys, like, not just the US Women's National Team, but even kids that I train, their mindset is like, they want to do more. They go past the line. They go past the cone. They put yeah. that extra work in. And... And to me, it, it, I, I love that. And, and when yeah. I'm like touching upon what I was saying about you, it's like, do you understand what I'm talking about? The mentality now, like you said, obviously yeah. you played in England and you had a great time at Arsenal. We both played at Arsenal. I wish we could have played at the same time. Now. But what, what do you think? Like, what is the difference? Like, why is America, why are the Americans so different with the mentality? Because I feel like if we were, to, if we were away of England, I could be wrong. And the men were doing the fitness test next to us. I feel like we would be discouraged to like celebrate one of us winning. They'd be like, oh, don't be like that. Like, don't, don't do that because it's like disrespectful. But it's not. It's just fun. And it's, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, Why yeah, are I don't know. So I, don't, I, I think that you're right. I think that like our, and you sort of alluded to it earlier with the language stuff. Like there is so many similarities between our two countries um, but there's like deep rooted differences too in the way that we, yeah, just like show confidence oh, and humbleness. Like our, I think our definition of class and professionalism and humbleness, it's like, it's slightly different, I think. Um, and, and nobody's better or worse. Like, I don't want to say like, I mean, clearly yeah, no, you I and know. I, clearly you and I like love America and we've chosen to like make our lives here. Um, so you know how we feel. Um, yeah, but I, I definitely think that like maybe, yeah, maybe it's a, um, I mean, pretty much from like a, not to be like nerdy historian, but like, I think America was for the most part, and can't say this about every single, you know, person, but like yeah. America was built on people that were like super brave and super courageous and just like wanted something different and went for it i mean well and... americans are very patriotic i mean i think in yeah. england like i said i'm always i'm always proud to be from england you know i love my country but i just think like americans are very patriotic you know the fourth of july and stuff like that it's like completely different you know yeah. i feel like americans really love being like america 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 you know yeah well <laughs> it is true and like right now we're seeing we're seeing patriotism like expressed in like some different ways um, from yeah. different groups in our country. And, you know, yeah, it, it's been a really interesting time. You know, everything from. But do you know like, what I'll say though? Not to get into politics, because I always think there's only one way it's going. But for me, like, people often say to me, like, I don't know how you live in America. You know, there's so much like gun crime, which there is, and it's terrible and it's awful. But at the same time, like, my experiences in America have been completely different. Does that make sense? Like, I don't yeah. necessarily live in places that don't accept me. Do you know what I'm yeah. trying to say? Now, I'm yeah, going to always yeah. fight for what's right. But at yeah. the same time, like, I've had nothing but great experiences in America. 
and that's just my yeah. experience and i've only seen great but maybe yeah. because i've had a different quality i've had a different quality of life you know i've been around amazing people amazing teammates great teams you know and i've had a completely yeah. different experience but i think yeah. out of all of my teammates or my national team and stuff that have been to america they liked it but they couldn't wait to come back to england do you know right. what I mean? Like, not many people stayed there. And whereas for me, like, I left Arsenal early, got out of my contract, lost my national team contract because I wanted to go and play for the Portland Thorns because right. I feel happier when I'm there. Yeah. You know what I mean? I would have got paid two contracts by being in England, which was way more money, but I just feel happier when I'm in America. And it's that feeling of, like, when I'm on a team, when I'm on your team or when I'm on a, a, in America, I feel like my teammates embrace me and love having me on their team. Whereas in England... Not every team I've been on, but it's like, if I'm good, it means that must mean I think they're not good. But I think you can be great together. And I think yeah. that's what the Americans do well. I mean, you don't always have to be best friends with all your teammates. I'd like to think people like me, but I don't love yeah. everyone I play with and they don't probably love me. But yeah. you have that common goal where you want to win, you know? Yeah. And, and yeah. I think that's what separates, you know, I remember in 2007 in, the, in China, in the World Cup, right? Greg Ryan, you guys got to, I think, the court semifinal and he got fired on like the Monday morning. Because you yeah. didn't win, right? Yeah. That seems harsh, but to me, that is what the Americans are about. Win, yeah. win, win. We, yeah. sell, we, we won the bronze medal in 2015, which for me was one of my favorite moments in my career um, with England because we never won anything before. But right. for me, I'm like, we're going overboard celebrating winning the bronze. Yeah. We need to be here, you know? And, yeah, and that yeah. was why I felt like I'm sometimes a bit like an alien because it makes me look like I'm like, like a sore loser or not really invested, but I am. I just want more. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, I totally agree. I, I And I, I think that you said it in, in the opening that you want to talk about the college system and things like that. I do think that we, um, and I'm very lucky to be working for him right now, but from oh, the yeah. women's soccer specific perspective, I do think that a lot of everything that you just said was really based upon like this one man who's my boss now, his name's Anson Dorrance, and the way that he um, set a tone for the U.S. team. So Anson was actually the coach in the, in, in the early 90s for the national team. So he won the first World Cup in 91. Okay. And that had the likes of a, like a super young Mia Hamm, a super young um, Julie Foudy, super young Christine Lilly. And I think that that, like, that generation of players plus his like vision – really set a, a platform and I think that he brought like the cultural pieces into it of like just uh, being brave of wanting to be a winner of of actually saying like okay you want to show love and care for the person next to you you want to tell them that you love them well beat the crap out of them at practice okay. because that's actually like that's actually you showing not from a physical standpoint but just yeah like, yeah 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 like push each other because that's showing them that like you want them to get to their greatest potential you love them you care about them and so you're going to push them and drive them and and that's how we're going to make each other all like raise this five ten percent that we didn't even know that we had in us um and i just think that that like kind of set a tone and obviously if you get a taste of winning uh you want it more you know and and, yeah. and arsenal had and arsenal still has that in terms of like you know FA Cups and league trophies and things like that. Like they, they were the winners. And like, so now they, they have a tradition of winning. And yeah. I think that like, that is something that the U S team um, built from the early nineties of, uh, of a tradition with, of winning. With you, working, of, with you working now with Anson compared to playing for him before, is he still exactly the same? Cause I've never actually, obviously I've never played for him, but is he still exactly, the, I know a lot about him. I read his book and stuff like that, but like, is he still the same now as when he, when you were there? Like, or um, yeah, more. I mean, the really impressive thing about him is he's been doing this for like 40 years, you know, similar to somebody like Ferguson or even Arson, like has been there forever mm -hmm. is but is like still so hungry to learn, still hungry to like win. Like it's a different squad every year. It's a different feeling every year. And I think that rejuvenates him. him he's like never bored. He's yeah. like always. But so... that's why I was asking, because to do this on such a high level for so many years and how, yeah. you know, taxing the college system is and, you know, the amount of games and the amount of yeah. intensity. Yeah. And for him to still be doing it at this point, it's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. It no, really is. Still, yeah. You need a certain personality, I think, to like have that um, resilience, like over such a long time. And he has it. And, 
and he got like some criticism years ago for like not evolving like you know us and spe specifically north carolina like for some reason people see it so black and white as in like you play possession football or you don't play possession football and i'm like okay there's probably something in between there that most teams are doing like let's i tell you what just, right we're not just booting the ball up to like like did you just boot the ball up to me and said <laughs> like with boston like no but like Overall, the American League is a more transition oriented. I got a lot of assists though, because you guys are super fast. And both of you were getting bad <laughs> yeah. breakaways. Okay, sometimes you just booted it. No, but I, I, like, I just, um, I'd like. <laughs> but Anson, like, he got like some criticism in terms of like that he wasn't evolving with the game, and I completely disagree. I think that he ha he has principles that he won't lose because why would he? Like he. He's still winning. And right, he's exactly. Still, like, is, but that's a major point, right? Because someone like Arsene Wenger, who I absolutely love, I think he's amazing, as much as I'm a Manchester United fan, he didn't evolve. Does that make sense? And I think Mourinho, yeah. we're seeing that with Mourinho now. You know, he was obviously amazing at Chelsea originally. Then he came back to Chelsea, got fired, went to Manchester United, and it just looks stale. Whereas yeah. Anson's still winning. So it's like, why would yeah. he change what he's doing? Yeah. Yeah. I think like any human being, like you have to like, evaluate and be self-aware to like hold on to things that are working and be willing and nimble to change things that aren't serving you anymore. You know what I mean? Yeah. And not like, and not feel like you have to scrap everything and like reinvent yourself totally. It's like, uh, there's some things that like are you and like are your DNA. And then there's some things that like, you have to update <laughs> like, yeah. like a freaking like iPhone software. Like we got to keep, <laughs> keep, like maybe they're messing with us and they demand that we do it too much. But um, so Anson, I think has, has preserved uh, like a, the, the psychological and like the, the attitude component and specifically his um, desire for his players to like embrace the one V one. Like, and I, I think that like, dribbling and 1v1 tricks and things like that like aren't really emphasized really anymore and I know even, but you, even yourself before. as a player right going back to you as a player right you were one of the best players I've seen the way you would just push it past and put that ball in the same as what you did in the world cup for the goal right the assist you yeah. got for Abby yeah. back. like yeah. that is so over like underrated that like you, I always say this to the kids, you don't have to do 35 step overs and scissor moves and quiff turns and yeah. all these things. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, literally, yeah. Yeah. it's about how you are productive on the ball. Does that make sense? Right. And the way you used to, like, push the ball past somebody and just hit it on a dime, and that's what yeah. you were good at, right? So yeah. why, yeah. why yeah. would you not do that and keep doing it if you're getting luck in, in enjoying yeah. what you're doing? Like, you were so good at yeah. that. And I don't think we yeah. do that enough in the women's game. Like, when I train with the boys, I was saying this to my coach, Nikki, like, when he hits the ball into me, he hits it fast, right? So any type of touch makes it go in from me. I feel yeah. like in the women's game, we tend to float the ball in a lot. Does that make sense? So then there's no yeah. pace on the ball. So then if you hit it, the goalkeeper just catches it. Do you right, know what I mean? Yeah. And I think that's something you were really good at. And I don't think that in the game now, there's not many crosses of the ball. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah, like, I think the that's just like a gutsy thing. That's just like a gut. It takes like some guts to put speed on it because if it doesn't come off, it's like embarrassing, but it's like, <laughs> but if it does come on, it, you know, you shank it out of bounds or whatever. But like, if it does, it's like you said, it's very hard to deal with as a defender and it's easy to score as an attacking player. And like playing it safe, I think in football and in life, not to get too like philosophical, is to just float a ball up there. And you're just kind of yeah. like, well, I did it. I did it. It's a good, <laughs> it's a good ball. It's fine. It's like, you know, it's not going to like, people aren't going to remember it if, if we don't score, you know? That it's was like... always my argument, right? That was always my argument with a lot of coaches because obviously I'm a center forward and like, so the, say like a winger would put the ball in the box and just whack it in. The coach would sometimes say, why are you not there? And I'm like, well, I'm here waiting for the ball. Like yeah. I'm in a good position. Yeah. Why are we just belting the ball into the box? And then like, yeah. they're like, why is nobody there? And it's like, because we're all lined up like front post, middle, far. Do you know right. what I mean? So it's not like we needed to kind of like, you have to have a look as well. And that's what I appreciate about you. And, you know, 
How do you find like the transition from playing to obviously being part of UNC now? Like, do you find it difficult? Because me knowing you, you'd want to still be out on the field. So <laughs> how do you find I totally that? do. I, would, I mean, I was playing pregnant until like five, maybe five months, six months. And then finally I had to be like, all right, this is getting outrageous. And the girls were so sweet. I mean, you could tell that they were like a little bit scared to like, uh, like say I was defending. They were like scared to cross the ball in because they were like, what happens if I hit her in the belly? Uh, which was oh, fair, yeah. which was fair. And then I stopped and it was fine. But I love the game. I think that like, I, I love playing the game rather, I guess I should say. I think that I'm probably going to be, I say this now, like maybe it'll change, but like I say, like I will play like forever. Like I'll play until I'm like an old lady. Like I love playing. I just like love the feeling of the, like the rhythm, the flow, the camaraderie. I just like love the game of football. So I, I think that like I will play and like, you know, five aside leagues or like whatever it is. And I'll always find reasons to jump into 5v2, all that kind of stuff. Um, yeah. But you're but one of the only players that I know that actually really loves the game. You know, like in America, I think that's one of the differences between America and England. Like we love the game. You know, we watch yeah. the game. We love the game. And something I remember you said to me about, what, seven or eight years ago now, you said to me, I want to play for Arsenal. Do you remember? Yeah. You said this to me literally seven or eight years ago. And you were asking me about, you're like, I'm going to play for Arsenal. And I was like, I believe you. Do you know what I'm trying yeah. to say? Like, yeah. I remember we had this conversation. And then look what happened. You went to play for Arsenal like seven years later. Because yeah. you're the kind of person that, you know, you don't just say you do. Yeah. And, and, and that's yeah. something to be said about your personality. You know, you're the kind of player as well that even if someone said to you, you know, this is not, you're not going to play today. You're going to work even harder to get into that team. Yeah. You don't just hide and you don't go away and cry. You, 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 you work on what you need to do to be better. And I, I've always admired that about you, not only as a friend, Thank but as a, as, a, as a teammate. Because, Thank you know, you. You, you're very different to a lot of players. You know, Thanks. you are very different with that mindset and, and you know, with that hey oh game face, you are very different. <laughs> yeah, I, I, yeah, thank you for saying that. I do think that, like, I, yeah, I just go after my dreams. I mean, listen, like, sometimes it all doesn't go the way you want it to go, but, like, might as well go for it. Might as well mm -hmm. not float the ball into the box. <laughs> 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 like, no one needs that. Or, or there's millions of there's millions of people that just float the ball into the box, but there's not that many people that like that drive it in and are willing exactly. to like float or, or, or flounder, you know? Um, and yeah. So thanks for saying that. I think, uh, yeah, there was, yeah. I always wanted to go play in, in England. Like, like I told you, like, I think that it was like always like this thing in the back of my mind. It was just a matter of when, um, so yeah, it was a cool experience. And, and now with the coaching, yeah, it is hard. I would say the transition, I was very <clears throat> nervous about the transition from player to like my post playing life. I think that like the actual anxiety of making the transition has, was actually harder than it was in reality. Like, I think I boiled it up in my, in my head that like, I don't know that like, it was, it was going to be so hard or like, what would I do? Or like, what would I feel the same way? Would my family like still be, would my family still like love me the same if I wasn't a footballer <laughs> anymore? You know, and I think- Yeah, that, no, like, it's you, all you've known. I mean, that's all you've yeah, known. Yeah, exactly. Like, like from when we were kids, you know, and it, it is, I think that it is difficult, but I think it's been um, smoother than I would have thought. And I think that like from a football perspective to answer your question, I do love jumping in at training, but I don't think that like, I really need the like games on the weekend anymore. Like, All I right. think for me, like what I've realized is like, yeah, I love playing like in 5v2 sometimes, playing some five-a-side tournaments, having the camaraderie of like, even though I'm the coach, like have, being back on the pitch, putting my boots on, being with the team, like having that, like that's what I, um, that's what I love, I think the most. And, well, Dave must but, like having, Dave must like having being able to spend time with you because you know it's hard for people, significant others, family members, when everyone's always on the road. You know, yeah. So it must no, be it nice was. for you to now be with him. You know, you're starting a family. It's amazing. No, I totally agree. I think that it was like we got so used to um, this like life on the road thing that that became the new normal. But really, it's not normal to like live out of your suitcase to live in like hotel rooms with like a teammate like five yards you know, away like you know, 
<laughs> it's not that's not you normal know what's so for, funny? Like, people in their thirties to do. And like uh, I agree because of course I I said to somebody before that wasn't in soccer, I was like, you know, it felt really good to have some stability. I lived somewhere for six months. They were like, that's right. not normal. That's not yeah. stability to live somewhere for six months. But in my mind, I'm like, oh my God, I wasn't in a hotel room or a suitcase. But I yeah. actually, you know, I actually enjoy that part of it. You know, I think when you're ready to kind of settle down, you'll know. But right, I kind yeah. of like that spont spontaneity and yeah. all those things. But at the same time, it is nice to sometimes be in one place, but you do think it's normal and it's not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It isn't exactly. It isn't. So yeah, this is like That's... a new chapter. And actually this, um, this lockdown has been quite good for Dave and I to like really, really spend quality time together. I think before the baby comes, which has been like a silver lining, like clear, everybody's looking for like, okay, what's the silver lining for me throughout this whole thing? Because, you know, whether it's time with family or time to reflect or like slowing down a little bit, like everybody can draw positives out of it. And I think for me right now, like that has been like, a lot of time with Dave and I, like before the baby comes, um, mm -hmm. I've like slowed down. Like, you know me, I'm like a busy little bee. Like I feel like fulfilled <laughs> when I'm like doing stuff or like meeting yeah. people and being around. And I think just with like the baby coming, like it was probably a good thing for me to just be like, no, no, you can't go anywhere. Like just chill and get a lot of rest. Yeah, you're and, like me. You don't just really chill. Yeah, no. Apart from, it, when yeah. We're singing, apart from when we're singing karaoke in Boston, you ne we never yeah. really just chill. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sometimes I chill with like a bud in my hand, but um... I mean, do you know what's funny? Like, you, I wouldn't even be able to tell you were pregnant. Like, it doesn't surprise me you're just taking it in your stride, literally. <laughs> yeah, I, no, no. You wouldn't even well, be able to. Like, tell. But then I go like this. Can you see the bump? Yeah. There. Wow, <laughs> but you're still ball. like tiny. Like your legs are still tiny. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's amazing. Do you know? Uh, what? Before... It's different for everyone, but mine is just like literally right in the front of my stomach. It's just like all there. So hopefully I'm I'm hoping that like you know wow. the little dude well, comes before... in like three weeks and then then I can hopefully the team comes back UNC comes back or maybe the courage comes back in in a couple months. We keep losing you. Stay well, still. You're anyway. moving around too oh, much. There you are. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was yeah, gonna yeah, say. Yeah. Well, before you give birth live on Instagram, there's a few questions. There's a few questions that a few people are, have sent me. I won't ask them all because we had loads. Funnily enough, um, and like I said, I was a little bit disappointed. There's someone on the show that's won more than me, which I can't really. I don't really like too much, but it's okay. <laughs> yeah, but you know, I've never played Champions um, League, and you know that bothers me. I've never even played it, and you've won it. <laughs> Well, I can we okay. I'll give you okay. Let's swap our medals for six months. You can have my Champions League medal. Can I have one of your Olympic gold medals? Sure. <laughs> okay. I mean, I yeah. have three of them. No, so, so some of yeah, the... giving. I have three of them, oh, so giving God. you one is like no big deal. <laughs> <laughs> this is what I love about American mentality. This is what I love. <laughs> yeah, have arrogant. one of my medals. It's confident. Yeah, dude. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I never got to play no, Champions so... League, but what can you do? No, oh, your mom's on. Hi, Joan. Your mom's on. <laughs> she's always on. She's always requesting to be in the video. No, so some of the parents have asked me and asked me to ask you, you know, if a kid is not, say, scouted for college, right, like, you know, like picked up, what can they do to be seen? So what is the best environment they can put themselves in? So is it club soccer? You know, because I know a lot about that system, but you've obviously, you work at UNC now. What can they do if they've not been recruited? What can they do? Um, but they want to play college soccer or like they want to, okay. Um, I would just say like to be proactive, like we were just talking about with Arsenal, like with me, it's not like I just like sat in my room and was like, Oh, I hope Arsenal calls me one day. <laughs> like, you know, like I made it happen with like being proactive and like, and I just think that like, um, yeah, just, just be proactive in terms of, um, making relationships, sending, you, you know, your letters and videos. Yeah, because um, I think a lot of the time, some of the kids get a bit deflated that they've not been recruited. But just because someone hasn't been recruited doesn't mean, you know, sometimes there are diamonds in the rough where they've not been found, you know? Yeah, no, absolutely. And and things happen at these schools. Like maybe they, literally, maybe they you had the game of your life, but for some reason, that coach was like sick that day. And just didn't see it. And like, 
and we have it we it's like a defense mechanism to build it up in your head like they don't want me i'm not good enough it's like well no there's maybe other reasons there like mm -hmm. you know what i mean and so don't play this like mon mental like gymnastics with yourself um just like believe in yourself and be proactive and and do everything that you can do and and control what you can and mm -hmm. and and like i do think that there's a place for everyone to play like yeah whether or not it's your dream school whether or not it's unc whether or not it's division one like the top division like maybe not but like if you love this game if you have a drive you have a heart i think that there is a place for you to play i um, agree and so yeah to just kind of go after and be pro proactive i guess mm -hmm. that's great advice to give it also so leading on what was your favorite memory playing for the national team if you could pick one moment, obviously you've had many moments. I know, I know. What could you, what would yeah. be your favorite moment for the national team? Um, I think my favorite moment, like, yeah, my favorite moment probably was um, an assist that I had at Old Trafford. You probably know where I'm going with this league. Yes. Being a man, you can. We played in Old Trafford in 2012. And, um, it's my favorite game and favorite memory because we played Canada and it was a crazy game. It was uh, four to three, we won, but Christine Sinclair had a hat crazy. trick for Canada. It was like back and forth, crazy, crazy, crazy. And I didn't start that game. Um, I started a couple games earlier in the tournament um, and Tobin Heath and I were, were basically swapping like who started and who didn't. And she was playing great. So like I w didn't start that game, which was, which was really hard. I mean, it's the semifinal of the um, Olympics. Um, and so I was like severely disappointed. And the entire first 90 minutes, um, you know, I was up, warming up, staying ready, watching this game that was like crazy stressful. Um, but I stayed ready. I think I'm really proud of myself. I stayed ready. I stayed composed. And I believed in like my quality and, and my value. And like you talked about, earlier it was like a crossing ability um and so actually i was put in an overtime and late in overtime um abby passed to me and i was able to fire the ball in the box and alex actually headed it home um but like i think about i think about how many touches i maybe had before that cross i probably touched the ball like three three to five times yeah and like this one play this one like, and I, I was ready for it, and I'm really proud of myself. As you know, like, we were going into penalty kicks, like, any second later, and anything can happen in penalty kicks. So, But that's why oh. you're an ultimate true professional, because, you know, I always say to the kids and even teammates, you get that one moment in a game, and you've got to yeah. make the most of it, especially when you're on the bench. No one likes being on the bench. We, none, nobody does. But it's how you think, if I get into this game, what can I do? Right. And you've got that one moment, and you, and you took it, you know. Yeah. It's true. If you don't touch the, ga the ball going into the – it's, like, hard, isn't it? No, yeah. if, even in the beginning of the game of the kickoff, if I don't touch the ball in the first five to seven minutes, I get antsy. Even yeah, yeah. Just kick, you just want to get on it. Even if it's just a, a two yeah. to three yard pass, I'm not talking anything crazy. Yeah, no, I totally agree. That's why, yeah, that's why it's hard coming into late into a game because not only have you like not touched the ball for the last two hours, whatever, but like the game is crazy too. So it's like, it's yeah. not even like calm football where everybody's kind but of But I think like, that's the misconception when you're a sub. I think everyone's like, why are they tired? Why are they not doing something? And it's like, to get up to speed with the game yeah. when you've been on the bench, it's quite hard to do. Yeah. And I think that's what people don't understand. Yeah. They just think, oh, you should be coming in. You should be making a difference. And you did. You came in and yeah. you made a difference. So, yeah. But I remember, know. like, it was at Old Trafford, which was a really special venue. Like, I remember just, like, giving my husband, Davy Boy, like, gave me the <laughs> biggest hug after. I think that he was, like... He was so happy and so, Aww, like, proud of so me, cute. I think. And, like, he, like, literally, like, you know when somebody hugs you, like, so hard that it's, like, it kind of hurts, but you're, like, geez. <laughs> um, I totally remember him doing that. And, like, I was, like, that's really cool. Like, I just did something cool. But when you're a footballer, you're so, like, in the zone. Oh, my friends are on. Yay. Um, <laughs> when you're a footballer, you're so in the zone of, like, am I starting? Am I scoring? Um, what – what's going on in my career like you don't really see the magnitude of of things like that um and you also don't realize what it feels like to be a family member because i was saying this to my like dad like for example like when i used to go and watch ash play i'd be a nervous wreck and yeah. i'd be thinking why am i like this and my mom and dad yeah. like, how do you think we feel when we're watching you play in the world cup and i'm like 
actually, I never thought about that. Yeah. Because you're not in control of what's going yeah. on. You, don't you have no control, they... but then they have to be the ones to console us when it's all over. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so they're like, please, God, make it go well. Else I'm going to listen so to true. this for the next couple of years. <laughs> No, but honestly, I'm going to let you go now before you give birth. But I want to say for me, you know, you we need more Hevro Rileys in the game. No, you know, thanks, that's how mate. I feel about you. And I need, I, I'm so happy you're staying in the game because you're such a great role model here on and off the field. Your work rate, your visualization. If you say something, you do it. And that's something that I'm really happy that we got to play together in Boston um, under strange circumstances. Yeah, I'd like to season. say that it was all great memories, but, you know. <laughs> Here. No, but it was good. I think we had a good time and, and you know, I, I really enjoyed being your teammate. And, you know, like I said, I always say to people, winning is not, you, you have, a, have a little bit of luck, but winning is a mindset and a mentality, you know, and it's not just like you become great overnight, you don't become bad player overnight, but you've won your whole career, right? Yeah. And that's not just by luck. You don't wake up one day and you're like, I'm going to win today. It's a process, you know, and like I said, the fact that you're still involved in the game, it's so great because these girls and the younger players need to see more Hever O'Reilly's because they just do. So cool. I'll let you go now before you start giving birth online. <laughs> I, I, I hope you, I get to see you it soon. It was so good to see you. You're, no, you're I hope really I'm great at this hosting thing. I think you should be a TV host. Thanks. I'm going to definitely come see you when I um when I come back, when all this, all, all this craziness is over because I plan on coming to North Carolina to see you. And Dave oh, awesome. Boy. Yay. Well, can't wait. All right. Tell Dave, I said, Auntie. tell Dave I said bye and I will. Right. Okay, Bye. take care, buddy. Bye. 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 Okay, guys. So that was the formidable, awesome Hever O'Reilly. Unbelievable person. Unbelievable player. Um, like I said, I feel blessed that we got to be teammates, not only because she's a great player, but great person and a really great person to have around the team. And, you know, one of the things we touched upon there is that one moment that you get in a game, whether you're on the bench, whether you're on starting in a game, you know, you get those one moments that you can just kind of, you know, that can change everything. And it changed everything because the US went on to win that game, much to Canada's dismay. But um, yeah, so next week, like I said, we've got another unbelievable lineup lined up. You guys can hit me up if you want and let me know who you want on the show. And uh, maybe I can get them on. I know a lot of people, so that helps, but maybe I can get them on the show. Anybody, what other questions have people sent through? But thanks again to Hever O'Reilly for coming on. Um, I love talking to her. Great person. Champion of champions. Still staying involved at the game with UNC. Let's see. Who wants to be in my video today? Let's have a look. Oh, let's see. How's everybody doing today? Good. I've got some questions here that maybe I missed. How are you both feeling? Yeah, sorry, guys. I missed some of these questions. Hi, in Turkey. I see you're watching. Thanks for watching, guys. It's been amazing. Let's have a look. Who's requesting me? Let's get somebody on. Send me a request and I'll get you guys on. Let's see. Connecting. Hi. Hello. What's your name? Uh, Natalie. Natalie. Natalie, I take it you're in America? Yep, New York. Where about? New, New York, York, upstate. Oh, like near Buffalo? Uh, no, like Canada almost, like 30 miles. Oh, so near Niagara Falls? Yeah, kind of. Because I used to live in Buffalo, so I used to go to um, Niagara Falls a lot. It was really fun. Yeah, that's good school trips. We went there for school a couple months ago. Okay, so what team do you like? Uh, U.S., um, Orlando Pride, Ashlyn Harris. I'm a goalkeeper myself, so. Oh, okay. So you just listened to my chat with Heyo? Yep. Did you like it? Oh, yes, yes. Yeah? Yeah. How old, how old are you? Uh, 14. 15 okay. in three days. Nice. And do you want to play soccer, like, in college and stuff? Yeah, I'm from a really small school, so it's going to be really hard probably, but we only have, like, 300 kids um, from kindergarten through 12th grade. Okay, but I like what Heyo just said on, on, on the chat that, you know, it, it doesn't mean that you're not going to be seen. It doesn't mean you're not going to be found just because you go to a small school or anything yeah. like that. But just keep believing in your dreams, all right? And keep yep. watching players like Ashton Harris that you look up to, the Orlando Pride, the national team, because they are the best and they're the best for a reason. As much as it pains me to say it being from England. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so it's great speaking to you, all right? 
All right, thank you. Have a nice day. Take care. Bye. Bye. Well, that was nice. Shout out to upstate New York. This has been great, guys. What a great weekend, eh? Starting off yesterday with Leo the Lion. James Ellington earlier. I'm going to upload this chat as well to my Instagram. So those of you that have missed it or want to share it with your friends, um, you'll be able to uh, do that on my Instagram. Let's see. A few more people have requested. Let's have a look. Let's see. Let's get some people on. Unable to join. Kirsty. Massive shout out to Kirsty Cavill in the house. Much love to you, my friend. Shout out to Brazil. Shout out to an Iran. Some other questions. Do I still play? Yes. To be determined where I'm going to play next. Um, with obviously the coronavirus and a lot of things have changed. I'm now back home. Um, but I'm not going to be staying in England. Those people that uh, <laughs> say to me, oh, you're going to be staying in England. No, no, no. Much to be fair, though, the weather's really, really nice. So maybe I'll stay. Ciao in Italia. Como stai? Guys, I'm seeing your comments. I really like them. Thanks, guys. Much love to the Arsenal fans. As much as I'm a Manchester United fan, I love my time at Arsenal. This is wrapping up an unbelievable weekend. Next weekend, honestly, I'm just looking to just make every single week bigger and better. I don't know how if we're going to top this week, you know, but I'm going to try. Who's my toughest person you've played against? Huh. Toughest person I've played against? Becky Salbron. As a centre-back, uh, the best player I've ever played against is Marta. 100% Marta. But the toughest player that I've ever played against is Becky Salbron. She's so difficult. Really nice person. I actually played with her in DC. Great person, but so hard to get past. She's so fast and she comes out with a ball almost like Virgil van Dijk. I was born in South East London, in Lewisham. A lot of people are saying that I should have my own TV show. That's the plan, guys. I'm looking to take this a little bit further than Instagram. Don't worry about that. That's my goal. That's my plan. And I believe if you visualize something, you can make it happen. Shout out to everybody in America, my second home. I love America. As I spoke earlier, I love where I'm from. But America is just, for me, one of the greatest places in the world, 100%. Let me see. I know I've missed some questions in here because a lot of you have joined. US Women's National Team fans have been in for a treat today. Heather O'Reilly, nine months pregnant, coming on, joining us, answering some of your questions. I know some people have asked me about a professional team in Los Angeles. Um, I'm going to keep. I'm going to keep still pushing for that. Obviously, there needs to be a team in LA. There needs to be a team. It can't be such a beautiful place in Los Angeles and not have a professional team. It's not possible. Um, but yeah, anybody got any other questions that I've missed? Hello in Iran. Hello in Qatar. Hello in Dubai. Much love to you all. How's everybody doing today? I'm a little bit jet lagged because I literally got back six, day, six days ago. So I've been wanting to stay up all night, eat at weird times and sleep all day. So, yeah, it's been a bit weird. My head feels a little bit like all over the place in a good way, I guess. But these kind of things make me happy. Hello in Wales. It's so cool. So cool. There's so many different people all over the world that have joined. Let's have a look. See, some people request and then they, like, request me and then they decline, which is kind of weird. But let's see. Let's try and get someone else on. Unable to join. Hi, sis. Shout out to my sister, Joanne. Yeah, some people have been asking me about my travel home. Well, I'll, set, I'll upload some. Hi, in South Africa. Um, I will upload some pictures, like, um, next week. But it's crazy because... I literally, there was about five people on my flight and it was amazing. Literally, I had like rows and rows and rows. The only thing was there was absolutely no food. No food at all, but shortbread biscuits and cookies. So that was a bit frustrating. It was a 12-hour flight and I was absolutely starving. Um, so as soon as I landed, I had steak and kidney pie and chips from the fish and chip shop. <laughs> so that's what I had. Let's see. Request, request, request.
Let's have a look. Is it connecting? Hi. Hello, my guy. I can't see you. Why can't I see you? Can you see me now? No, it just says connecting. Oh, I can see you, but I it's it must have froze because I'm out. Oh, maybe. Is this my guy and my Man United friend that I'm going to the Man United game with? Yeah, I can't wait. I've told my nan. No. Uh, when you were on Sky Sports the other day, uh, my nan was watching it as well. And uh, she said you're a nice person. And she didn't believe that uh, I'm in contact with you. She didn't believe it. <laughs> let me see if I can get you on. Hold on. Let me cancel this. Let me request you again. What a nice kid. Yeah, this is my little friend that I um, promised I'd take him to the Man United game when it obviously comes back. So let's have a look. Let's see if it works. I'd rather see his little face. He's so cute. Let's have a look. Yeah, there can you, you see are. Me now? Yeah, I can, can you see me now? Yeah. But it's kind of frozen. Like, Where are you? I, I, I'm just like, just at the top of my street. I'll start walking back home so I'll get more connection. Wait, so but don't... like, when, when you were on Sky Sports, like, I was showing my mum and my sister, and they, and they didn't believe who it was, and I showed us the chat that, and, and my nan said, well, it's, it's a small world, and it's mad how I can connect with footballers over over all the years, and I'm just grateful that I can get in contact with people like you, and inspirational people, because not all footballers are as kind as you are, who are willing to like, get in contact with their fans, no, you know what I mean? Do you know what, there was something about you that I felt differently about, you're such a, you're such a great kid, like, you really are, you're so grateful, Thank humble, you. and you're such a nice boy, and it's so nice to see such a young kid with such good manners and appreciation, and that's why, Thank you. when I told you, I promised you to take you to a game, that's why I went yeah. to, because I get a lot of people that ask me, you didn't ask me to take you to the game, I offered no. to take you to a game, and you're such a nice yeah. kid, and, and I, I wish you weren't frozen, because it keeps coming up that you're frozen, but... I'll, I'll try, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to run home now, and I'll turn no, on my way. Don't go hurting yourself, don't go hurting yourself. Go I'm nearly home now. Don't go hurting yourself, but, you know, there's some kids that you just feel like you connect more with, and, and you're such a yeah. nice boy, and I'm glad that we've been able to connect, and, like I said, when all this craziness is over, we're definitely going to yeah. go to a game together, all right? Yeah, just thank God for... We always have to thank the Lord. Can you see me now? Oh, yeah, there you are. <laughs> when it's, like, my birthday, we always do, like... I pray every night because I'm a Christian, but, like, I'm just thankful for my life and uh, thankful for the Lord. Just give me another day and all that. You're such a good boy. Just got to stay honestly. blessed. You are such a great boy, honestly. You really are. I've not come across many kids like you, honestly. I'm so glad that we've been able to connect. Is that a Man United shirt, mm -hmm. I see? Yeah, Man United, the way one. Yeah, I like that. You got anyone on... Oh, you, you don't have people on the back of it, do you? I remember I asked you that last time. Ah, oh, he's frozen again. <laughs> All right, maybe I'll have to... A lovely kid. Like, honestly, he's just... What an amazing boy. Like, I, I literally met him on Instagram, like, on the lives um, about, what, a month ago now? Three weeks ago. And he told me that he lived with his nan and he liked to go and watch Man United. So I offered to take him to a game. And the appreciation the kid has is it, just on a different level. And I'm a big believer, you know. I think a lot of kids are really good kids. But I don't think that a lot of them now know how to interact because of the internet, because of Fortnite, because of, you know, Call of Duty. People have lost their their ability to be able to communicate and connect with people. And I'm always a big believer in gratitude and appreciation. And I'm sure people think, here she goes again, you know, with her gratitude and gratefulness. But it's true. I mean, you've got to be grateful for this life. And you heard what he said. He's like, I'm just grateful. You know, he's like, I pray every day. I'm grateful to be alive. And, you know, he's about 12 years old. I mean, come on now, you know. So what a great kid. Honestly, unbelievable. Kevin James. <laughs> I, my dad was asking about you earlier, actually. My dad was talking to Carl Richards, I think. And he was asking about you, and they were talking about you. We should definitely connect when all this craziness is over. <sighs> Wouldn't you have a holiday to Turkey? You have a shirt of mine. Yeah, I love Turkey. I've only ever been there to play. But I've never actually been there on holiday. But I'd love to go. Let's have a look. 
to get some more people on here before I'm going to go. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Uh -huh. Hi. All right. How are you doing? What's your name? Hey, Olivia. Olivia. Yeah. So I knew it was, I was going to say Ollie, but I saw it on your Instagram. But you've been doing all the workouts, haven't you? Oh, yeah. I know, because I've seen you oh. come up on my, on my Instagram a little for a few times. I'm a flight attendant, so I don't get any of that stay-at-home business. So I decided it's time to get in shape. Wow, that's amazing. So have you been still working now during this time? Oh, uh, I'm grounded for like three months. Oh, okay. Yeah, so... Are you, where are you? Which part of the world? Um, UK. Okay, where are you from? Originally, I'm from... Yeah. But, um I've been living in the UK for God knows how long. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So you decided to take this time to get fit? Yeah, so I can fit back into that uniform when the time... <laughs> I you... love that. No, because I'd never met you before, but I've noticed, you know, I do pay attention to people that write to me and, and say things, and I noticed that you were writing to me, and I, I've responded to you and yeah. reshared your stuff, and I was like, oh, she's been doing the workout. Did you do the one today? Yeah, eating the meals at one o'clock in the morning ain't going to do me anymore, so... <laughs> no, but the thing is, do you fly, like, internationally or oh. only... Everywhere? Yeah, I even... Yeah, because I even do... you know how I'm feeling at the moment. Jeez, the wind nearly knocked my phone over. Yeah, I even... Um, to Manchester half an hour quick turn around you know and go back home <laughs> yeah like the jet lag is real like honestly like I want to yeah. eat like I want to eat dinner in the middle of the night because obviously in LA it's eight hours behind and yeah. I'm just like all over the place but usually it takes me about a week to 10 days to like get into the flow of things because like people said to me oh you know you've gone home do you have to go into 14 day quarantine but yeah. you don't unless you have symptoms but I am actually staying inside because I don't really feel like going anywhere to be honest like I don't, I just feel so tired yeah. that I just don't, I just want to rest and, and recover. So actually this isolation, quarantine, 14 day thing has actually worked well for me. Oh, God. So when do you think you'll be able to go back to work? When they tell me to. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, that's amazing that you, there's two ways you can go about this. I think it's taken a few people a little while to get yeah. used to this whole lockdown thing. It's not an easy situation, but you should be really proud of yourself that you're using to get fit. Two weeks were absolutely great. I did nothing. And then I thought, I can't do it anymore. I was like, I, I want to pack. I want to go. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, I know. But keep up the good work and keep joining me on these lives because <laughs> they're also like, you know, um, it, I'm glad that you found the inspiration even yeah. in the workouts. But at the same time, I'm, it, you should be really proud of yourself that you've, you know, taken that upon yourself to do that. Yeah, no, it should be. I mean, I've done loads of them flights where I've been eating chocolate at one o'clock in the morning. <laughs> I, I know, that's my advice. I love chocolate. Tell you what, when I came home, my mum got me loads of Easter eggs from Easter because I've not been home. I'm not going to tell you how many I've eaten so far. I've only been back a week. But I tell you what, those Cadbury's Easter eggs are on a different level. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. Honestly, night night flights when nothing's happening. I'm just sat there with a cup of tea and like loads of biscuits just to keep myself. <laughs> and I'm sure. <laughs> All right, Olivia. Well, I'm going to get someone else on, but it's great speaking to you. Keep up the great work. And I'm glad that you can do the workouts and... Take care, all right? Bye. Stay safe. Bye. So that was Olivia. Well, guys, Sinead, one of my best friends in Portland, Oregon. Yay. Love you. Sinead's one of my favorite people in the whole world. Alex, what are you saying? What are your thoughts on the Bundesliga? yeah i think it's great that the german league has come back but i also think it's so strange um so strange when there's no fans there you know it, it, it's i don't like it without the fans there it doesn't seem real but i'm glad that it's back and everybody's paying attention to the bundesliga um it's great hopefully we can get the other leagues going again when everything is safe and you know and, and we can be sure it's going to be safe Guys, I've got like one minute remaining on here. Um, and like I said, thanks so much for you joined me today, yesterday, the day, whenever you've joined me. Thank you so much for joining me because I really appreciate you all. Everybody that's come on live with me, I appreciate you. Um, your questions. Speak, thank you again to Heather O'Reilly for today. To my friend, James Ellington. Um, thank you so much to everybody. Shout out to you in East Brunswick, New Jersey. Sending you lots and lots of love wherever you are in the world. Stay safe during this time. Hug your loved ones if you can. If you can't, you will be able to soon. 
Peace from me, over and out, from Sanderson's Virtual Training Ground in London. Have a wonderful week, you guys. Bye.